Hi, and thanks for joining me. This is a quick tutorial on getting started with Google Classroom. And in this segment, we're going to talk about how to create a class and how to add students to your class. Now to get started, you're going to need to go to classroom.google.com. And when you get there, you'll see an environment like this one, or you might see what looks like a chalkboard with a chair in front of it um, with a getting started page. And if you're a teacher, uh, one of the things that you'll be able to do is not only create classes but also join classes if you're taking part in a class as a student for professional development. Now to get started in creating your class all you do is go to the top right and click on the plus sign. Now when you click on the plus sign if you see the drop down with join class and create class you're fine. But as a teacher if it takes you straight to a window that says enter class code here to join a class that means that for some reason your Google admin does not have you set up as a teacher and you'll need to contact the Google admin for your district and ask to have them add you to the teacher group. In any case once you're set up all you have to do to get started is click create class and at the top you have uh, the first requirement which is a class name and what I typically tell people is to do one of two things. You can either name your class by the subject you teach or you can name your class um, by your own name. And people usually ask how many sections should I have? If you're an elementary teacher I usually suggest that you create uh, a section for each subject if you wish to or you can just have one section for your entire class. If you're a secondary teacher and you teach multiple sections in a day, then I would create a section on Google Classroom or a class for each hour that you teach. So to get started here, we're just gonna make a class. I'm gonna call this World Geography. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna mark this as first period. And that is an optional section. You don't have to give that as is subject. You don't have to give it a subject if you don't want to, but you can and that just helps um, in finding it later. And then you click Create. Once you click Create, it'll, it'll create your class and it will set it up with a banner. Um, usually they try to give it a banner based on the subject you've chosen. And in this case, because I chose History uh, or Geography in this case, it did put a banner at the top that looks like a map. Um, they will try to walk you through and give you a tour um, of Google Classroom as you go through. So it doesn't hurt to kind of follow that tour and get familiar with some of the ins and outs of the course, um, but you can always close the tour as you want to. Now, um, across the top, on the far right, I have Select Theme or Upload Photo. If you don't like the banner they gave you, you can click Select Theme, and you can choose from the gallery of pictures that they have here or you can go up to the top and change the patterns and choose a different pattern if you want a different pattern for your banner. You also have the option of uploading your own banner photo if you'd like. I will tell you that if you're going to create your own banner or you're going to upload a banner of your own choice it needs to be 800 by 200 pixels because that's what fits at the top and um, it's easy to create your own banner by going into Google Drawings and changing your page setup so that it is 800 by 200 and then saving that as a ping file that you can later upload. I've done that on several occasions. Once you got your banner set up um, then we have this row of menus here at the top. For every class there's three menus. There's the stream and that is the center of the screen where your announcements and assignments and other things that you post show up as the students would see them. And later on in other videos, we will go over how to post different assignment types and you'll see and understand the different types of assignments as you go through those videos. But for now, we're primarily concerned with getting the class set up and getting students enrolled. So let's take a look at these other two menus. I'm going to skip over the student menu for a second and go to the about screen. On the about screen, uh, this is where you can add a little bit more information about your class. For instance, if you want to give it a description so that students understand especially if it's an elective class, um, a description so that students can understand what that class is about. You can put that here. Uh, you can also add your room number. Um, so if you wanted to put your room number, you could put that there. Um, then you have your Google Drive folder. 
And what you need to understand about Google Classroom is that when your class is created, or when you first begin using Google Classroom, Google will create in Google Drive a classroom folder. For instance, on my Google Drive, my classroom folder is right here. And inside that classroom folder, there is a subfolder for each course you teach or for each course you're participating in. In this case, uh, these are other courses that I participated in. And of course, this is the class that I just created today. And then as you create assignments, there will be subfolders that are created inside that class folder. And the reason that is done is um, when you're using Google Classroom, Google Classroom takes care of all of the sharing settings that you would normally have to use in Google Drive if you're going to share a document with your students or your co-teachers. By taking care of all those sharing settings, um, it saves you a lot of time uh, that you could later use for other things. Um, and so it makes just using Google Drive, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, all of those different things a little bit easier. Plus, it's all contained in one place. So long story short, don't change or delete this folder in Google Drive. If you see it pop up there and you're like, what is that? Uh, don't get rid of that folder and consequently don't delete these folders because this is also uh, where uploaded assignments that students turn in, it, this is where those will be shared with you. So uh, just leave those folders as they are. Uh, the next thing we have is a calendar. Every time a Google Classroom course is created, uh, Google creates a calendar for that and you can view it either here in Classroom, uh, which is right here. I can see that my World Geography calendar is here. Or it's also uh, viewable inside Google Calendar. So if I click the Open a Google Calendar link, you can see that it takes me to calendar.google.com and I can see that over here at the left, I have a World Geography calendar that has been added as a secondary calendar on my account. So as you add assignments to your stream, um, the due dates for those assignments will show up on Google Calendar and any students that are enrolled in your course will also have a calendar view of that course in, in their own Google Calendar. So again, it takes some of that sharing responsibility away from you and it does it for you, which is a great thing. At the bottom of this page, if you click Add Class Materials, you can link something such as a, a syllabus to your course. All you have to do is click Add Class Materials and you can give it a title and then you can attach a document from your computer or from Google Drive or you can put an introductory video for your class here. That's a great thing to do. Uh, just create a, a video about your class and post it on YouTube and then link to it from here. And you can also put any secondary links that you want associated with your class here as well. And then finally on the about menu over at the left, um, you can see your profile photo and your account name and your email address. And then you have this invite teacher option. And the purpose of invite teacher is that if you have a co-teacher in your course, you can invite them to be a part of your class and it will give them the same responsibilities that you have in creating and posting assignments and adding students if you'd like to. Okay, so let's move on to the students menu and this is the last thing that we'll cover in this video. And this is one of the more important things. Getting started with your class, you'll want to put students in. And so in order to do that, a lot of people would think, okay, I've got six sections and that's about 130 kids. So that means I'm going to have to type in all of their Google addresses uh, to invite them in my class. But that's actually not the case. When Google Classroom is set up, you're given a unique class code and all you have to do is give that code to your students and they can self enroll in the course, which saves you a lot of time because it's a lot easier for your kids to self enroll in a handful of classes as opposed to you enrolling and inviting 130 kids. So that class code can be turned off to prevent others from getting into the class after the course has started. Uh, all you have to do is click the drop down menu and click disable. And if you want to change the class code, you can always click reset and it will generate a new code for your class. You cannot choose the code that you get. It is generated randomly. So whatever code is given is, is kind of what you've got unless you just reset and find one that you 
think you can remember. I typically tell people to take that code and write it on the board at the front of the room or put it on the syllabus that you hand out on the first day so that students know um, how to enroll in your class and what code they need. Uh, just keep in mind you're going to have a different code for each section that you create inside Google Classroom. And then as students enroll in your course, um, they will show up here. So I'm going to go ahead and enroll in this course and show you what that looks like. I will need this code. So I'm going to go over to another account here. So I'll go to classroom.google.com and at the top I'm going to click the plus sign and I'll click join class. So that code, I'll just put that code in here and that's 1QUQE8 and I'll click join. And of course, once I click join, it'll check to see if that code matches and it's added me. And so now I have one student in my class. So if I go back and look, I can see that student is here. And you're going to notice that with each student you had, there is an invite guardians link. And if you do have an email address for your student, uh, for their parent, then you can click invite guardians and then add their email address in and that will send a regular email summary of what's going on in your class on Google Classroom to that parent. And to see an example of that email summary, just go over here to the left where it says Guardian Email Summaries and click See Example. Now this shows you what one of those email summaries might look like. And of course parents can choose to um, have that email come to them either daily or weekly and they can also opt out of it at any time. And likewise, uh, once a student's parent or guardian is invited, then uh, any classes that they're in besides yours will also be linked to that email address and they'll get summaries. And sometimes some teachers may not want summaries sent out about their class because their Google Classroom may not be used for class as much as just testing or discussion and they don't need to have a weekly uh, roster of assignments sent out uh, for parents necessarily. So you can just turn off the switch for your class right here. But if you want your class included in that weekly email that's sent to parents, just click this switch right here um, and then click add class and all the classes that you teach will be added if you also check that box. But then you just click add class. There are some other rules at the top of the student menu that you'll want to pay attention to. For instance, you can uh, place a check next to the student's name and under the action menu you can remove that student individually if you need to. You can send an email to selected students or you can mute students. Muting means that they're unable to leave posts or comments in your stream or on assignments and that might be because they've uh, left inappropriate messages in their posts or comments. Uh, you also have the ability to determine how students can act in the course as far as uh, leaving comments. Right now, by default, all classes are set to students can post and comment, which means that back here on this class, as a student in the class, I have this plus sign where I can post anytime I want to in the stream. If you don't want that, you can change it from this setting to students can only comment. If we do that, then back here on this account, we will notice that if we refresh the page, which is already refreshed, that plus sign goes away and that student can no longer post in the stream, but they'll still be able to leave comments or questions for the teacher on assignments. And then finally, the last setting is if you don't want them to post or comment at all, then you can set it to only teacher can post or comment and then students will no longer have the ability to leave comments on assignments or leave questions. I typically will leave it in the middle setting because students can only comment, allows them to ask questions if they have a question about an assignment, and it also allows them to take part in the question option. Later on you'll see a video where you can create a question as a discussion type of assignment, and if you choose to use that option, you will need to have it set up so that students can comment. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, please look later on for some other videos about uh, posting assignments to Google Classroom as well as creating questions, reusing posts, and then parent email. There's a longer video on parent email if you want to see that one. So 
Uh, thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.